Hey, it's Fiber Michelle, and haven't done a video in a while. I messed up my computer. You know, uh, before all the fibro fog hit in and stuff, used to be able to use the computer like a smart person, you know, do my bills, do my videos, hook up TVs, hook up a sound system because I, you know, was a musician and I played and stuff, but all that stuff is gone. And uh, stuff I did last night is gone. But do you know what isn't gone? I, I'm still getting a lot of letters from you guys, even on videos I did a long time ago. And you know what it makes me think? It makes me think that it's amazing that more information isn't out there to help you guys than what I can pitifully provide for you. So I want to say a couple of things. Um, remember when you're ill, it is your whole body. Um, it started with me, and I didn't realize it, in my childhood. Um, I'll get back to that in a minute. But what really started was there was a pain on the left side of my body in the back underneath my shoulder blade. And, of course, there's nothing really there. So doctor said, oh, there's nothing wrong there. Well, then I find out, you know, years later, my mother that's never sick that we haven't talked in probably 10 years because I don't send her money anymore. And, uh... Uh, she can't be nice to me because I'm sick, but that's a different reason. She actually had a rib removed. If she would have listened to her daughter, that's one of the first places with uh, fibro that, that we're getting pain in the rib, right back in here. Um, we also never have good digestion. Never. Um, you'll find that smells will be strange sometimes you won't see well your eyes are dry your mouth is dry you get mouth sores and you'll go to different doctors they won't have any ideas but they want to act like they do so they'll give you something to take that you shouldn't be taking so my best um, advice after all of this you know knowing and going through it consciously since 1995 is don't go to doctors anymore they don't help uh, I had a mouth sore in my mouth three different dentists the periodontist uh, Cleveland Clinic Cleveland Clinic Cleveland Clinic in Fort Lauderdale which actually said they do not see people with fibromyalgia anymore they did charge me for it though so you know, it would be amazing if we had actually uh, some type of a law that said they can't discriminate against us. If I would have been an HIV patient, uh, they probably would have had a lawsuit by now. But we know how that goes. I've had uh, pain doctors. Uh, there's Dr. Milner here, this ostentatious idiot that goes after blondes um, that has kicked most gay people out of his place calling us drug addicts but that's another thing here in Fort Lauderdale we need to put a list of all the bad doctors together I had one guy tell me because my prolactin level spiked that was early in the early days uh, when I was losing my voice and that type of thing and uh, pro my prolactin went really high found out I was uh, a lesbian and he said it's well We'll go into it later. But there's doctor horror stories. So the best thing I've found, okay, I even tried again. This doctor uh, was an ER doctor. He was able to heal his patients. So they did the thing where they put um, the vitamins right into you with the IV. I was never so damn sick for the last four days whenever they try stuff like that. They can't do all these vitamin infusions to somebody that's very ill. And God forbid if you're cute and you look good. If you don't look like you're really sick, nobody's going to believe you. They're going to call you a drug addict. They're going to give you hell. So I guess that's why I do these videos. And, you know... I guess it's strange for me because I'm still getting some comments from videos I did from a few years ago because I, I, I don't know, I guess I went on such a journey and I want to, I wish I was smart enough to put my journey in one place so you guys didn't have to make the same mistakes I made and spend the same kind of money and have the same kind of heartache and maybe you could 
say something better to your loved ones so they you wouldn't have to cut them out of their lives your life uh, but I'm not magic and I'm not a miracle and I just want to help and you know one thing I've learned is taking your own life is really not an option even though I have thought about it many times I mean when you wake up every four hours in pain and some people don't understand what pain means because I don't know in, in our own areas we think since we've been through something other people have been through it also it's in the realm of experience but that's not right ask other people questions I've asked people questions and it blows my mind somebody told me oh no I've never had pain uh, he, and was a younger girl never even menstrual pain no um, a lot of people really don't know what pain is and so then if you say you have pain and they don't understand it how can they understand what you're going through they can't and uh, trust me I've had pain I was a cowgirl when I was younger bucked off a few horses had quite a few uh, knockouts that's what uh, my idiot uh, <laughs> neurologist uh, attended anyway they make you feel like an idiot these people when they don't understand if they're insecure if they're actually people that care about their job and they care about people then that's where you should be going but if you go to someone that is not making you feel good about yourself and is doubting you and it is saying bad things to you making you feel bad leave get up leave there's nothing that says you have to stay there for the whole exam okay if they don't treat you right leave now I don't know what to say about partners and family I mean my dad came up and I know he was trying and I showed him a whole book and that he kept opening it exercise because I was in bed from 2004 till 2010 and uh, wanted to tell him well you weren't really around when I was growing up but I'm the one that got myself up at six in the morning and washed the horses and fed them I'm the one at 13 that had a full-time job a part-time job and still went to school and supported my mother and my three brothers I'm the one that moved out when I was 16 and have taken care of myself ever since without anybody's help I'm not lazy never have been lazy I've worked my ass off my whole job everybody said you can't make a living singing well I did when I went to New York for a little vacation went to buy a microphone well I saw a thing to audition for rent didn't even know what it was been to one Broadway play even though I dreamed it my whole life and I got a second call back I did things I went places I got in my van and I went across the country I did whatever I wanted to do and now I'm stuck I get confused if I drive down the street so I was going to all these different doctors now I'm stopping I'm done you know they want to take away pain medication opioids um, opioids have gone back for many many years of painkillers and basically because they want us to go on Lyrica and Cymbalta and Neurontin and all the shit that will tear your brain up basically it tears your brain up so much you don't even care if you're sick then nobody has to deal with you and that's what they want so all that stuff's out of my life all of these fibro fatigue centers um, the Guaifenesin it's good idea to get all the stuff out of your body I do use it because I've noticed when I take that I can get a lot of yellow mucus out instead of just white so I do still take the guaifenesin. Um it's always good to stay away from chemicals use vinegars waters no dryer sheets no chemicals to clean um, in your car always try to be around things that don't have chemicals because everything builds up and makes it worse I stopped eating fried food and you know fast food in 1996 I was health food when health food was uncool so it's so funny every time I go to see one of these new damn doctors they treat me like I'm stupid oh you need to do this yes I have you know my old refrigerator was full of stuff 
people didn't know about in the 90s. I've been through it. I've gone through it. The acupuncture, the people. The only thing that really works with this disease is to stop seeing doctors, stop getting procedures, um, try, try to deal with the fact that you're not who you were. And you can't be who you were. That's the hardest part. Try to uh, do something fulfilling. I started painting and it really helped me. Do some videos. I mean, come on. Help me make some lists from doctors. I'm not, you know, very good at lists and stuff like that. Let's help each other. This is Fibro Michelle. I want to help more than I do. I get comments from you guys that break my heart. And you know what? They actually also keep me going because I know I have to get up. And I have to tell you guys, you can get up. But you know, what happened was if I tried to get up in the house I was living in, the bed, I go there, it's just the bed. It's where I sweat. It's where I'm in pain. It's where I can't get up. It's where I can't eat. You know, so many people don't put all of their symptoms together. Everything that happens to you is part of this disease. You know, um, eating is not pleasurable. Just stick to really something light, not prepared foods. Stay away from gluten. Stay away from milk. You know, I mean, there's just things that you just have to do for your whole life. Some of it will work, some won't. Getting up does help. Trying to be around people helps, but you know, God, when you start hearing the stupidity that comes out of people's mouth, especially people that know you, and you think that they understand you, then you really don't want to be around people. You stick with your babies. I got the new baby. This is Zach Attack. Hey, Zach. These guys are the best friends you'll ever have. Get a dog because it makes you get up and get out and make them potty. And it gives you the love that you need because we do need love. And we're not getting it from people in our lives because they, a lot of them don't believe us. Or, I don't know. You know, I, I've, I've given my girlfriend, I've told her, if you don't want to be with somebody, say, go. Don't, don't stay here because you'll feel guilty because it doesn't do a thing for me. It doesn't do nothing for me to stay here and pity me. I don't want that. But you know what? Killing ourselves really isn't an answer either. If you have enough rage and energy to kill yourself, Richard, listen, motherfucker, then turn it and do some of these videos with me or start talking to other people or help me make some of these lists. Help me get to other people. You know, I saw so much infighting on Facebook. Um, I did these YouTube videos and I got so many nice comments that I kept doing YouTube videos. Then I posted some on my Facebook page, and oh my God, some of these people are like, oh, this girl is so drunk. She should stop taking her medication. She's taking too much medication. Or, you know, there's been different times in my life when I've had a different cognizant level that I was able to speak at, but I was still brave enough to put it out there and be judged. And, and I'm brave enough to not go back and take off the bad videos. They're all there. There's 30 or more. Some are good, some are bad, and I'm not touching one of them because I do a video. I don't plan it out. I just do what I feel like needs to be done, and I put it up there. Then if I have some of these people come back at me and say, oh, she's taking too much or doing too much, well, you know what? The people that actually are going to give you the worst criticism are the ones that aren't doing anything to help themselves or other people. See, I don't pay them any mind anyway. I will leave up all the good and bad videos. And uh, that's just going to be my part as a human with a disease that I've been battling my whole life. Ever since I was a kid, I remember having constipation. I remember having my eyes closed with mucus and my grandma 
opening them with boric acid. I remember not keeping up in track. I never remember feeling well. Going to a mall is like the worst thing you can do because you've got all the different chemicals and the lights and the noise. I, you know, I, I, I was a musician for many years. I can't even go to a concert now. I mean, just the different levels of everything. But I'm not feeling sorry for myself. I'm creating. I'm going to try to finish my CD. I'm going to have a damn art show. There's any of you around Fort Lauderdale that want to help out. I got a job open. I need somebody detail oriented. Uh, give me a call. But anyway, Richard, if you're listening, if you see me, I want you to call me. I don't want to hear any more of the other stuff. If your woman is still with you, it means she loves you. I mean, I, I know how you feel. I, I don't want to get in anybody's way either. I would rather somebody leave me on the side of a road than feel bad for me. But, uh, you know what? A lot of us that become afflicted with these diseases are people that are very sensitive and talented. So, we have to remember that and try to be who we are. Fiber Hal Michelle, talk too long. Love you guys. Please keep sending the comments. I need you guys. And I love you. And let's not ever any of us do anything that's too final. Okay? You can find me on Facebook. Some of you said you can't find me. Just look Michelle Certonio. C-E-R-T-O-N-I-O. -O. Google it. I don't know how to find myself anymore either. I'm dumb on the computer. Um... Keep trying. Start. I take, you know, photographs of my dogs. It makes me happy. I paint something. It makes me happy. You know, there's so many things we can't do, like cook or, you know, take baths or. Anyway, we won't go into that, but we'll do some of that later. But come on, let's keep it up. Let's keep going and let's support other people with our illnesses. Let's not worry about. Uh, the verbiage that some people go crazy about. Just be supportive. Just show someone love because that is the greatest help and love of all is to show acceptance. Fiber Hamashel. Thanks. <laughs>